Welcome to Defamer Ember Day 23. How is this even possible? I can't get over how fast these days are just flying by. This is the journal so far. <laughs> it looks amazing. I love how bulky she is. Ah, she's such a beauty. <laughs> this is today's bag with a black raven. It's quite bulky. Let me first show you the animal freebie we're using today. It's this cute monkey. And our snack is one that I have no idea where it's from. It's a jawbreaker. I could not find any indication on the wrapper, but maybe when I unwrap it, I can tell. Oh wow, look at this color. I love it. It's really huge. So it says a jawbreaker on a stick. Let me taste this. Oh my goodness. It's as sour as these, which I still haven't finished, but I'm really enjoying them. It's just as sour. Maybe it's the same company. There's no way I can eat more than this now. I mean, I can't bite into it <laughs> unless I really want to break my jaw. It's very hard to rate this because I'm just at the outer core. So I don't know how it is inside. That's not really fair to rate it, is it? I'll have to come back to this rating. If I manage to eat this more in the next few days, I will do my best to rate this, but right now I don't feel that it would be fair to rate this. So we'll leave that blank for the moment. <laughs> Let's check our prompt for today. This is all that's left of the lollipop. Oh my goodness, it's just a few hours later and I finished it. Can you believe this? The whole hard candy layer was sour. Yep, I ate it and inside was a bubble gum. Oh, and the candy layer changed colors. So after the blue that you saw came pink and yellow and inside then was a big bubble gum, which as unfortunately is usually the case, lost its taste pretty quickly. So overall, I'm going to rate this snack 6 out of 10. Okay, our prompt. This has caused me a sleepless night. <laughs> our prompts are flower and a paper doll. Doesn't sound so difficult, right? I have experimented and it just didn't come out like I wanted it to and it was driving me crazy. So the first thing I did was cut this cute chimpanzee out like that. By the way, his name is Jimmy. I kept thinking Jimmy wanting to be a superhero. So I'll tell you what I'm not going to do. <laughs> so I tried making him a Spider-Man costume, which actually worked quite well. So I even made it with these white little things that go around his body like that, so that his costume actually holds. So that would have been Jimmy as a Spider-Man. <laughs> That was just a prototype. But no, that, that just is not it. So all night I was tossing and turning, trying to figure out what does Jimmy really want to be. And finally, what sparked the idea was going through this journal. So I kept going back and forth through this journal until I came to a spot that sparked an idea for the whole scene I want to create, which was this one right here. What sparked my imagination for what I want to create are two elements on this. It's actually a coin envelope. One is the leaf and one is this five. So the leaf for me symbolized the jungle and the five somehow symbolized like a movie. It kind of reminded me of, you know, in the movies you have these, what do you call them? Where you clap them and you say, take three, take four, take five, whatever. For some reason, the four of this five reminded me of that. So Jimmy here actually grew up in the city. His parents migrated from the jungle before he was born. And so he never got to experience the jungle. So naturally he's imagining how would it be to live in the jungle. 
So Jimmy goes to his best friend. So may I introduce, this is Charlie. Charlie is his friend who he grew up with. So they're like two peas in a pod. And by the way, if you don't have a Charlie like this, this one came from a vintage book that I have. Maybe you remember we had this beautiful partridge as one of our animal cards. So you could use him instead of him. So Jimmy and Charlie hang out together as often as they can. So Charlie is a city bird as well. I mean, they grew up together both in the city. And Charlie has this one particular spot where he likes to hang out, which is on this fence. So that's where he usually sits. The fence, by the way, is a really cool dye by Hero Arts. Website is www.heroarts.com. It's called DF029 Chain Linked Fancy Dye. But of course, this fence does not look as pristine as this one. I'm going to try grunging it up with my caramel alcohol ink. No idea what that's going to look like. I would also recommend to try the rust method that I showed you on this bookmark with the acrylic paints but I've never tried the alcohol ink, so I want to try that. Oh, it looks like we're not going to see that on the black. Okay, never mind the alcohol ink. So instead I'm going to try my raw umber and just put that in different areas. I know you cannot see it. <laughs> This also gives it a little bit of texture. And then I'm going to add my mandarin red. So Charlie's hanging out on this rusty city fence. And one of the things Jimmy loves to do is to ride on Charlie's back. So they're both imagining what it would be like to be in a jungle. So we already have this one beautiful leaf here. I love how Louise grunged this up and there's crackling on it. It just looks absolutely fabulous. And thankfully I have the same die cut she used for this leaf, which are these thinlets by Zizix Tim Holtz. It's a number 665559. It's one of my favorite dies. And I have some of those already cut out. And look at this one, for example. This one is cut out of one of my baking paper backdrop papers. Even though I didn't use crackling paste, it has this crackling effect as well because I used acrylic paint and that ended up looking like that on the baking paper. And look how well these two go together. Made for each other, no? <laughs> I love this. And I also still have this one that we, of course, cut out of the Korean can. And I added the alcohol ink on top. So I think this one also needs to go here. I don't want to cover up Louise's sleeve completely. And in Jimmy's jungle imagination, he doesn't have to rely on his friend Charlie to fly. He can actually fly himself. So he actually has wings. And this is where the flower part comes into play. So he found some tulip petals out of which he's going to make himself some wings. And if you don't have any tulip petals on hand, I suggest you use this butterfly, which was in one of the other freebies from one of my earlier videos. And I will link this freebie with this butterfly. It's actually not a butterfly. I've been saying that wrong the whole time. You know, I've learned in the meantime that this is clearly a moth. So we can tell by the antennae, there's no balls on the ends of the antennae. So it's a moth. So I will link the freebie with this moth again for you. And I want to show you how great he would look with the moth wings. And he would even have antennae. Look how amazing this looks. I love that. 
But in his fantasy, in my journal, he wanted these petals as wings. So when we look at a butterfly or moth as an example, we can see that the top part of the wing is always bigger. And a lot of times it's also more dominant in color. So that's what we have here. So these petals here are the top part of his wings. And then we have the smaller bottom parts. Yep, like that. And I'm going to cut this part here that's sticking out and this part here off. So I'm going to carefully glue him on. Just put glue in the middle here. And then I can cut this piece off. Oh, I see now these sides would have been much more colorful. Wait, can I still change that? So scared of tearing. Well, they have more pigment here. Okay, let's try to turn this around. And then he needs like straps because those wings are strapped around his shoulders. This is a white Posca pen, by the way. So now Jimmy can sit on Charlie's back with his strapped on wings. And they're still having a hard time imagining they're in the jungle because all around them is smog and gray and it just doesn't look like the jungle yet. Let's see if I can remove this gently without breaking the stem of the leaf i hope louisa you didn't glue this down oh you did of course you did <laughs> oh no i don't want to destroy the stem ah maybe she didn't good job louisa thank you so i want to add some forest moss distress oxide to start off with Then I want to add some water. And then I want to add this Sage Gloss Spray by Dana Wakely. Unfortunately, my nozzle is clogged, so I can't do that. But maybe we can, yeah, we can drip like this. Wow, that gives pretty cool effects. Spray some more water here. I'm going to dry this and we'll see what that looks like. Ta-da! Complete fail. <laughs> so basically there's no green left after drying it. So we need to try something else because I want to lighten the background. So in comes the gesso. And I think since the oxide is water soluble, when I put this gesso on here, it should turn into like a pastel green. I am curious. I'm fine if it doesn't, but it looks like it is turning green already. So that's awesome. I of course have way too much. Sorry, I have to cover the five. Oh, I can pick up some of the forest moss that's on the side there. What happens if we spray some more of that now? And add some water and add a bit more of this sage. I'm going to dry this again. I'm very curious. That's much better. And while they're in their fantasy world, some of the reality is coming through as well from time to time. So we're going to add some crackling. This is Texture Paste Opaque Crackling by Ranger. So that's like the crackling of the buildings in the city that's coming through their fantasy. And I'm mixing in some of the green because of course those two worlds are mixing their imagination and the jungle and the city those are mixing in their heads 
So moving back into reality, we have our fence that Charlie is sitting on. Mixing with their imagination of the leaves of the jungle. It would have been much easier if I would have, would have thought of this before, but I didn't. So I'm covering my elements up as best as I can because through the green of the jungle, we still have some bricks showing through from the buildings around them. In the meantime, I bought myself some matte white opaque spray. It's acrylic spray. I got this at my local art store. Probably better to tape this down. I'm nervous. <laughs> Never used the spray before. Hmm. Okay, it needs some more here. I'm not sure yet how I feel about this. Let's put this on here. By the way, I totally forgot to mention because I'm so excited. <laughs> this is stencil THMM2. It has crackling and it has the bricks. So this is now the mixture of their imagination of the jungle and the real world with the bricks and the fence and the crackling. The crackling also symbolizes the crackling of their imagination when they come out of their fantasy back into the real world. You know, the, the fantasy world is starting to crackle and then they appear back into the real world. So let's put Charlie and Jimmy back so we can glue Jimmy on to Charlie. And then we can glue Charlie onto the scene. And by the way, speaking of Charlie and the birds, I have another goodie for you. So I have backgrounds that are called boho birds backgrounds. They are a totally different style to this, but I think they are really fun. And you can get 50% off for these backgrounds by entering the code DEF2022BIRDS at the checkout in the relevant box from today, December 23rd until December 31st. And I also have another freebie for you today. So this is it. These are all handmade flowers and I'll show you the originals. So they are in my <laughs> very chunky journal from Nadia in which I film all of my junk journal snack videos. So if you want to see me create in this roly poly, <laughs> Please check out the link to the Junk Journal Snacks playlist below. So here on this page, we have this flower hand cut and made out of book pages and one layer of fabric. So that's this one in three different sizes. And this one here is from this one right here. This is made with a die cut using baking paper, which I used as backdrop paper to my desk and then adding this little fabric cluster with some sewing on top. And these flowers here are similar to these that I have here, except that these here are painted with coffee. So I want to cut out, I think these four small ones and then add them to our scene. So they're all cut out. I've inked them up with walnut stain to define the edges. So these are the flowers that exist in both the real world as well as in their fantasy world because they could be flowers that they find in their jungle. But they are also the flowers that oftentimes grow along the fences. So I'm going to glue those down. And then we can cut all these parts away.
Then I want to add golden dots where I had them originally on my flowers. And I also want to add some golden feathers. Because, of course, in their fantasy world, they are magical creatures, both of them. Unexpectedly, this page is making me quite emotional. And then Jimmy's wings can also get a little bit of magic. Hmm, kind of hard to draw on petals, I'm realizing. Okay, so let me show you some of the gold reflection. So that just makes everything a little bit more magical. And the reason why this is making me sentimental, there's actually several. So first of all, it warms my heart. <laughs> just these leaves here, that this is Louise's and these are mine and they fit together so perfectly. Like in real life, I think we are a great team and I love doing anything with Louise. She is such a huge inspiration for me and I look up to her so much. She is the most creative person I know and it blows my mind how her mind must work. I'm so in awe of Louise, I can't even tell you. And I'm so grateful that I can call her my friend. Ooh, getting really emotional. <laughs> But also, this page is so meaningful to me because, first of all, the topic of urban nature is so dear to my heart and close to my heart. Living in a city, you often realize how population is taking away space from animals. They're losing more and more of their nature. And of course, in reality, they don't have the capability to escape that reality, to go into this fantasy jungle world. And it makes, <clears throat> and it makes me sad that animals like Jimmy and Charlie have to even pretend to be in the environment where they're actually supposed to be in. And it reminds me of all those poor animals locked up in zoos all their life. This really got me. I need to take a short break. I also think this defemorember is taking a toll on me. <laughs> Filming these videos and making these projects every day is emotional when you put your heart and soul into it. So maybe it's just all coming together now. <sighs> But this has got to be one of my favorite ephemera pieces, if not my most favorite. Not only because I like the way it looks, but because of all the different meanings it has behind it. Whew. It's amazing what art can do with us, how it can touch us, isn't it? I hope you have similar experiences when you create in your journals because it's really rewarding. I mean, I did not mean for this to get so emotional. <laughs> I did not know this was going to happen or that this was going to be the outcome, but it just developed how it had to develop. And I'm so grateful for this piece in my journal. So flower and paper doll. Oh, did I ever explain the paper doll part of it? I mean, for me, it's obvious, but maybe it's not for you. Maybe the whole time you've been thinking, but where's the paper doll? Little Jimmy here is the paper doll, of course. For me, that was very obvious. So I'd say, check. We only have two more to go. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you back here tomorrow. Have fun with your own journals. Love you guys. Mwah! Mwah! <laughs>